Uh, welcome to Wonder Wednesday. Uh, Doc Chips here. I hope you are all well. Now, I am not going to talk for too long this morning before we get straight into everything that I want to cover today because we had a few technical glitches yesterday. So thank you for bearing with me, but it meant we couldn't do all of the show case uh, blog sharing so I'm going to jump straight on into that in a second plus we've got um, a great experiment coming today really interesting this one thanks to the team at Great Science Share and straight away I want to say thank you to Helen Spring from Spring Learning who's put the resources together today for me and for you there's a there's a sheet on the website to download to help you I'll tell you more about that in a second but Yes, let's get straight into it. I want to jump onto the showcase blog, share not only the fantastic um, abstractions, your speed drawings and modelling that you sent in yesterday, but also some wonderful pictures of people playing with the AR, augmented reality animals, and also from the day before, the towers, the incredible towers that I wanted to show yesterday and was gutted and was upset that I couldn't get to show them. So let's go for it straight away this morning. No messing. Here we go. Sharing my screen. And there we go. Hopefully you can see the website. So first of all, let's jump onto the showcase blog and let's give some shout outs to people that have been taking part. AR Animals first. Here we have Isa, Zachariah and Yusha with this huge tiger in their front room. And look, even Batman is scared of this tiger. It is so uh, scary. Um, you could probably think of a better adjective than that. Uh, Bertie, also a tiger that came to tea. Love this picture. Very well posed, Bertie. You've got it just right. So it looks like you're giving this lovely big kitty a bit of a tickle on the back of the head there. I also love this photo, although Bertie, I must say that I think you need to work on your scared face. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen someone looking so uh, like they're giggling at the prospect of being eaten by an alligator or a crocodile, which is which I can never remember. We've got Nabba with uh, a wonderful panda in her front room as well, and... The same panda perhaps visited Mustafa and Abdullah and took a seat right between them there. Look, very domesticated panda. Um, and Harry, <laughs> love this, love this picture um, of Harry with a great, the, the head of a great white shark there just hovering above him. So thank you to everyone who has shared those pictures have, who have been, oh, sorry, we've got another one. Uh, Jess, Harry and Lion, there we go, out for their daily exercise. We can all go out and do our one piece of exercise outside at the moment. They went for a walk and they discovered this giant lion. Look at his incredible mane, or his uh, yeah, incredible mane there. It's a he, isn't it, of course, because of that big mane. Um, so well done to everyone that had a go at exploring that uh, yesterday. If you didn't uh, if you don't know how to do this or you didn't tune in yesterday, go and have a watch of the um, da Daily Dose from yesterday. It shows you how to use this new feature within Google Chrome when you search for particular animals. Um, then it show you can turn them into augmented reality. Uh, there were some other animals as well people um, sent in. Uh, the hedgehog one I love, the cat one. Um, so it's really, really good fun. A very, very clever piece of technology. And, and tell you what, do some research as well. Where else is augmented reality being used for to help which jobs and uh, in which industries and what what else can you do with augmented reality? And let me know. To send in your uh, what you find out. <coughs> excuse me to Doctor Chips Daily Dose at gmail.com. Now let's move on to uh, this post here. So I announced yesterday the two winners of the crazy character algorithms which were sent in were Louis and Sakibs and we got everyone that was watching to follow their crazy character algorithm and draw their crazy character to see hopefully that they're all fairly similar because that will mean their algorithm was precise enough and it certainly seems to be the case because we've got, look at the similarities here between this uh, one from Jess, the Welsh boys sent in um, 
similar one there. That, that's uh, Louis' one. Okay, this is uh, Sakib's one. Maybe a little bit more room for interpretation in Sakib's one. Because can you see, look, the ones from Louis all pretty much look the same. Uh, and Sakib as well, actually. Uh, which is, so it's fantastic. Thank you to all of these people. We've got Zachariah, we've got Sam and Peter. Um, I think your dad sent these in. So thank you very much to Dad for sending these in. Um, those were your crazy characters when you followed the algorithms. Uh, Zachariah, who I have the pleasure of teaching at my school. Jack Thorley. Um, look, again, they're very, very similar. So well done to Phoebe and to Louis for those wonderful, crazy character algorithms. Very precise, very specific. Very good job, you two. Now, speed drawing. Okay, these made me laugh. Fantastic, all of the posts that I've got here. So let's have a look here. Who have we got? We've got Harry, Charlie and Lily. The triplets, Mr. P, mini Mr. P's. Uh, fantastic quick fire drawing of different animals. I think we've got like a lizard, a cat, and is this a cow? I think it might be a cow. Uh, the shape of the head makes me think it's a cow. Um, Abdullah and Mustafa. Now, a little bit tricky to see here, but really impressed with what they did. They actually tried drawing the same animal with 15 seconds, 10 seconds, 5 seconds, short amount of time. I think this is mum's one here, actually to show how they had to simplify the shape each time there to make it, uh, to, to remove even more unnecessary detail um, and just get down to the real, uh, the, the, the main parts, the key features of what makes the animal look like the animals. This one being a horse here. Love this photo of uh, Isa, Zachariah and Yusha. They've got the Play-Doh out. Um, making their models and we've got Jesse's speed drawing of uh, 12 seconds for that giraffe I'm pretty certain it's a giraffe and Harris and Issa excellent and now I think this is an octopus but I think and I think this is Issa's I want you to go away and do a little bit of research for me about how many legs in an octopus have and let me know and well done to the Welsh boys here holding up their pictures a little bit tricky to see they had 30 seconds and 10 seconds, um, and they drew uh, a bee, a man, a penguin, and an axolotl. I don't know. I've no idea what that is, but I know that they could probably let me know. Could you send me an email and tell me what that other animal is that you've drawn, please? Because I'm interested. I'm curious about that. Um, and Hatim and Hanayas, uh, can we guess what you've drawn? Well, uh, I think this might be a Oh, it's a shark. Is that the fin on a shark? I think maybe. So if anyone else goes on here, see if you can guess what they've drawn and let me know. And we've got Harris here as well with the snail following the instructions there. Look, he's talking about what he included and what he didn't include, as did Jack Thorley. See how many I get sent every day. This is absolutely wonderful. Rakea Fatu and Abdu Bakar, much better elephant than the elephant I drew. And finally, Callum, I know you're tuning in every day. Um, 30 seconds to draw an animal. Look, he's been even been making notes here. Abstraction, removing unnecessary detail. And he's decided to include the shell, so the head, hand and feet, the head, tail and the eyes. And this is a turtle, I think. And now, finally, let's have a look at our tall towers from two days ago. I think we did a couple of these. I think we shared this one from Nabar and family and Jawad and Amina. And I think we shared, oh yes, I remember talking to you about the fact that here we've got Abdullah and Mustafa with a picture of the actual Burj Khalifa in the background. And there's their own Burj Khalifa, just higher than the two of them. Uh, and now here we've got Sarah and family. Look at this incredible tower, uh, which is significantly tall, oh, over 220 centimetres, which is 2.2 metres compute, complete with a husky viewing platform on it as well. Excellent. And I must say, Sarah, as well, when I got sent these pictures, I'm very jealous of your parquet flooring. I love parquet flooring. So, and that just looks absolutely lovely. And well done on your effort of tower building with your family. Harris and Issa, look, they've even put a flag at the top of theirs. Uh, is it just about taller than Harris there? I think it is. Paige, look how proud you are, Paige, and rightly so. 
because that is a wonderful tower that you've built, taller than yourself. It looks very stable. Jess and Harry, give them the thumbs up there, Jess. I'm giving you the thumbs up back. That's an excellent effort as well. As it is from Ben and Emma in Cheadle Hume. Love the construction of this. Great use of triangles, which we talked about. They're far stronger than rectangles. The 90 degree corner, uh, angles on, on squares and rectangles just really don't cut it for this. And the Welsh family tuning in each day. Love the Minecraft top there. Um, look at how tall this is. To get a perspective on how tall it is, we had to get Dad in the photo, and it is far taller than Dad. So, and uh, did we share Bertie's? Can't remember. We've got Bertie here. Excellent effort, Bertie. Uh, I like the fact that we went for a little bit of a spike on there as well, just to get a bit of extra height in there. Super duper. Isaac and Charlotte, excellent effort with a Teddy viewing platform. Um, and then we've got Austin and Penelope um, from Bromborough, Bromborough um, where, with their... T look, at, look at how tall that spike is on that uh, uh, tower. It's, it's almost twice the height of Austin there. Excellent job. Jack Thorley, look at you with your fantastic tower as well. Love the colours in that paper. Uh, and then just a couple more. We've got Inez from St. Phillips. Uh, well done, Inez, uh, giving us the thumbs up. Excellent. Uh, very stable structure there. We've got Maddie and Joe in Stockport. Now, I love this one. There's, they've got a saucepan. It's so strong, they've got a saucepan sat on the top of it there. That is how strong their tower was. Excellent effort to you two. And then we've got Zaina and Nanny Pat. I think I mentioned yesterday, Nanny Pat perhaps had a previous career in the construction industry because this is an excellent effort, passing on her skills to Zaina there. Well done uh, with the bunny viewing platform. And we've got Usman, who sent work in progress on his. Sammy, excellent effort with a candle midway up. Please don't like that because uh, the tower is a little bit combustible there. We've got Callum. And it's a very pointy one. It looks a bit like the Burj Khalifa, that one. And we've got Hassan, um, who is mid-construction of his. And finally, last but by no means least, Zachariah, Yusha and Isa with their tower. So can you see why I was so excited and up disappointed when I couldn't share all of those yesterday because it really made me smile seeing all of those come through um, the day before. Uh, well done to everyone who had a go at building the tower. Um, yeah, absolutely brilliant. So final, final thing to do before we get on to today's experiment. Let's give do the morning register. I want to hear a good morning, Dr. Chips. Uh, to those people that haven't already mentioned, uh, we've got Rakea, Fatima and Abdu Bakar. Good morning to you. Good morning, Callum. Uh, good morning. I've said it uh, once, but I'll say it again. Austin and Penelope Lucas from Bromborough. Well done to you uh, for your tower and thank you for tuning in. Joe and Maddie Hall, good morning to you. I hope to hear a good morning, Dr. Chips. And last but not least, uh, a special good morning to Charlotte Tatum, who has been tuning in every day, and it's her birthday today. 1st of April, it's her birthday. She'll be nine today, or she is nine today. Uh, her and her best friend, Billy, were going to have a party, but unfortunately, we've had to cancel it. This is one of the things we've got to do at the moment. We've got to make sure we stay apart from each other, so that's a bit of a shame. But I wanted to say happy birthday to you. She goes to Brooks Hill Primary, um, I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you uh, get some interesting presents, you get a chance to play with those, and you get a, you enjoy doing the experiment this morning as well. Okay, so I hope I haven't missed anyone. Let's make a start for today then. Runny Rainbows is our experiment today, and you should hopefully all have uh, some Skittles or M&Ms. I've gone for M&Ms just because... Um, the shop didn't have any Skittles. And the interesting thing about these sweets, the reason we've asked you to get these sweets is because, if I just put some in my hand, we can see they've got a bit of colour to the outside. Oh, that's not very good. I've just chosen all of the brown ones. I've got loads of brown ones. Hopefully, oh, loads of brown ones. Even more brown ones. Okay, I'm going to have to pick the colourful ones out of here. 
Um, now, you might have seen that lots of people have been putting up uh, rainbows um, as a bit of a symbol um, with the slogan, stay home, save lives. And so it was a nice experiment to do this, um, to explore how we can make our own rainbows through using the sweets and, and some water. Now, this is an experiment with the Great Science Share. The Great Science Share team have uh, created or told me how to do this. And what they've also done is they've put a help sheet, and I've printed my copy off here. They, they've put one of these for you to download on the website because Wonder Wednesdays is all about doing science experiments, getting curious, and asking scientific questions. And last week, last Monday, I talked a little bit about what makes a good scientific question, and it's when we can test things. So we looked at the paper helicopters and we came up with some questions such as, if I make a larger helicopter, will it fall faster or slower? Now that's a good scientific question, I hope, because we can test it. We can actually make a larger one and then we can drop it from the same height and we can measure it. And this sheet will help you each week to explain how to do the experiment and also then how you can come up with some good scientific questions to investigate. Okay, now let me just quickly show you where you can get this on the website. Uh, so I go back to my screen here, uh, go to the website here, and when you go to the website, which is just drchips.weebly.com, uh, and I think most people know how to get here because this is how you've ended up watching the video. If you just scroll down to today's Wonder Wednesday, it will say download file. Okay, hopefully you can all see that. And you just click on the download file and it will download for you the sheet that I have here. Okay, so simple as that. Just click download there. Let's come back to the, the wide shot there. Okay, so what I'm going to suggest today, don't follow along. Don't do this exactly the same time as me. Let me do it. Let me demonstrate it to you. Uh, let me model it to you. And then you go and download your sheet. It will recap how to do the experiment and then you come up with some scientific questions. Okay, so let's follow this through. Um, and uh, let's go to this one here. So we've got a little bit of uh, the visualizer and a bit of me. So what we need to do is you need a plate, okay? A shallow sort of source. So this one's a bit wet because I was testing it before. So don't, don't look a second while I just dry it on my shirt. There we go, okay? And then what we're going to do is we are going to take some of our sweets. I'm going to just pour them out on the table here so I can find the colours I like. Okay. But look how many browns I've got. That's not good. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to place, and it says it on this step-by-step -step guide, uh, arrange about 10 to 12 sweets in your plate in a pattern that you wish. Ooh, okay. So I quite like the idea. And actually, this is quite cool because pattern or recognising similarities and differences and spotting patterns is another computational thinking skill which we are going to explore in a few weeks. So hopefully you can all see the kind of pattern that I'm doing there. Okay, alternating. I think I might go for red in between as well. Maybe a red there and a red there. Okay. And then go for, do I want to do a brown? No, let's just stick with my reds if I've got enough. Uh, oh, no. Yes, look at that. Look at that. Perfect number of reds. I didn't have any more. What are the chances? Um, okay, so here we go. I've got my pattern. That's the first thing. Oh, no, actually, I've messed this up. Look, there's two oranges. Anyway, right, we'll carry on. Um, so I've got my pattern. And then it says, slowly pour the water into the plate. Try to avoid pouring it on top of the sweets. There should be enough to almost cover the sweets, but don't cover them completely. And then, step three, and this is the important bit, you have to observe what happens over time. 
So just like we did started our bread experiment off on Friday, and that's an observation over time, but that one's kind of days and weeks. This is an observation over time, uh, but hopefully it should be sort of minutes or so. So here we go, let's watch. I, actually, just take one minute. What do you think is gonna happen? Have a minute, just talk, turn to your brother or sister or uh, mum or dad, whoever's there, or if there's no one there, just uh, have a conversation with yourself, okay? And just think, what do you think is going to happen when I pour the water onto these sweets? Oh, I can, I can feel everyone discussing this. I can hear them. Great predictions going on here. This is about making a prediction, thinking about what's going to happen. Okay, should we give it a go then? So here we go, let's get the water on. Oh, stood on my microphone while I am. Okay, here we go. So gently, so don't pour them directly on, pour it in the middle here, and also don't cover them completely. Here we go. Now let's see. Oh, if we go to that, let's watch nice and closely. So this is about, a lot of science is about making careful observations, looking carefully, waiting, seeing if you can start to see something happen. Let's see if I can just bring it a little bit lower. I think you should be able to start to see. Look at this. Can you see our rainbow starting to appear? Okay, there we go. Look, look at this. So you can see. Oh, I do love it doing this experiment. Thank you so much, Helen Lynn and the gang at Great Science Share for doing this one because it is a fantastic visual experiment. An observation over time. Can you see everyone out there? My rainbow starting to appear. And look, look where the colours start, and then look how they move as well. And what I always think is lovely when I do this experiment is how you get these lines, these very straight lines between the two colours where they meet. <laughs> look at that. I like the uh, the combination of the green and the red there as well. And can you see over time the colours travelling further and further away from its source? We're starting to get a little bit of a mix now between the colours, but we've got a lovely rainbow shaped pattern. And I think at this point in a second, I am going to take a photo of that because that is ideal to go on the showcase blog. I'm going to put my own work on the showcase blog for this one because I think it's uh, a worthy effort to go up on the blog. So let me just grab my phone and get a good picture of that. There we go. There we go, so we can still see still see it going. Okay, that's sorry, let me zoom back in for you actually. There we go. So how wonderful is that? What an interesting, simple to do science experiment to explore this phenomena of how the colour actually leads our sweets and makes these beautiful rainbow-like patterns. So, okay, so you're, uh, now I, I hope you're itching, and I can tell you're all itching to go and have a go at this yourself, so I won't keep you for very much longer. But let me just share with you then the kind of things we might then think about doing. So I want you to go and have a go at this experiment today snap some photos of your beautiful rainbow patterns and send them to me as we've been doing every day, drchipsdailydose at gmail.com. That email comes up at the end of today and stays up for a little bit if you need to note it down. And then get your uh, sheet, your 
great science share sheet downloaded from the website and it will give you some advice on here about the questions that you could ask. For example, you might ask if you're in key stage one, hmm, I wonder what's happening to the colour? Where is it moving from and to? What do you want to try next? What, what, how could we change this and try something different? Or if you're in key stage two and you're a little bit older, maybe you could ask a question like, what's the relationship between the temperature of the water and the effect of the colour of the sweet and the effect on the colour of the sweet? So we could reproduce this, we could do this experiment again, and we could try some warm water. That was just cold water out of the tap there. We could try some warm water and see if there's any difference there. If, there's, if it makes any difference in perhaps the time the colour takes to spread or the way the colour spreads, I don't know. Or you uh, could explore perhaps um, what would happen if I used a different sweet. I've used M&Ms here. You could use a mixture of Skittles, M&Ms, etc. There are lots of scientific questions that you could ask. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what you come up with from that. I want you to send in uh, your wonderful, it's all gone a little bit uh, blur now, hasn't it? it, um, it uh, over time, all those colours are kind of mixing and actually it's starting to go more like a brown colour, which I had tried to avoid with my brown Smarties. Um, but yeah, really looking forward to send them in um, and I will show them, share them on the showcase blog tomorrow. And when you, if you are sharing on uh, Twitter or any other platform that has uh, that uses hashtags, please use the hashtag Science From Home with S as a capital for science, F as a capital for from, and H as a capital for home. Science From Home. Right. Finally, then I've got uh, one other thing to show you uh, just before we finish today, and I'm so pleased that I can show you this. For this show on the 1st of April, um, I'm really pleased to say, I've had this for years, but my spaghetti tree has finally bloomed. So I wasn't sure if it was going to bloom in time for this show today on the 1st of April, but it did. Um, so uh, I thought I'd show you because I'm, I'm very proud of it. I've been tending to it over the last couple of years. And you can see, if I just bring it up, a little bit closer there, we've got a lovely bloom of spaghetti on it that's just appeared. Um, some of you might not be aware that this is um, the main method of producing spaghetti. Uh, the trees take a while to grow, you've got to tend to them, um, and, uh, and then I think they flower, they bloom with the spaghetti every couple of years, so we are really very lucky uh, this year that I've had it happen in time for today's show on the 1st of April and I thought I would just share it with you because I want you to find out some facts about the spaghetti tree. There's one really important fact that I would like everyone to discover um, about the spaghetti tree and let me know. Uh, it's not, it, by the way, it's not about how this the spaghetti is then prepared to sell in shops. I know that, that how that happens. Basically, um, what people do is they harvest it by pulling it off of the spaghetti tree and you'll see it's all a bit bendy and then they iron it. You know, when it comes in the patterns, uh, patterns, in the packets, um, it's all straight. So it has to be ironed first. But there is, there's one, there's one important fact about the spaghetti tree that I'm hoping that all of you will go away and do a bit of research or maybe you know already. And I want you to tell me what that fact is. Um, the only other bit of information to share is that its Latin name, because all you know, plants and trees and stuff have Latin's name, is uh, the Latin name for the spaghetti tree is Aperillus fullus. Okay, so if you're searching, it's Aperillus fullus. So there we go. There's my spaghetti tree. Very proud to share that with you. And I do hope if you've been tuning in today, uh, Please do tune in tomorrow because I will be revealing that fact about the spaghetti tree and I don't want anyone to miss the important fact about the spaghetti tree. So I'm going to leave it there for uh, today. Thank you all for joining me. I will see you tomorrow to make 
magnifying glasses, yeah, couldn't remember them, really simple to do, you just need a plastic bottle uh, and a bit of water, that is it. Um, and uh, we're going to be also playing with some refraction experiments. You do need like just a regular glass from the kitchen and some water as well. I will see you tomorrow. Have a lovely day. Bye for now.